Proverbs chapter 3, um, and we're going to read verses 1 through 8. Uh, the Bible says, My son, forget not my law, but let thine heart keep my commandments. For length of days and long life and peace shall they add to thee. Let not mercy and truth forsake thee. Bind them about thy neck. Write them upon the table of thine heart. So shalt thou find favor and good understanding in the sight of God and man. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart, and lean not unto thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy paths. Be not wise in thine own eyes. Fear the Lord, and depart from evil. It shall be health to thy navel, and marrow to thy bones." So the book of Proverbs, uh, when you're talking about the different genres of literature, and there's lots of uh, genres of literature that make up the whole of the scriptures, the book of Proverbs is what we call wisdom literature. And wisdom literature is really fascinating and and interesting because wisdom literature utilizes all these different literary forms and uh, devices to help communicate the truth. Um, One of the reasons that uh, a book like Proverbs is kind of harder to outline or to break down like uh, some of the other books of the Bible, especially the New Testament, is there's not necessarily like uh, reoccurring themes throughout, like large sections, but it's more um, uh, proverb after proverb, thought after thought, uh, and they can be connected and build on one another, but most of them very independent. Uh, But while there isn't exactly like uh, always carrying through themes, one obvious theme, considering the fact that Proverbs is wisdom literature, is wisdom. And wisdom, scriptural, biblical wisdom, has been uh, defined, and I think rightly so, as the the skill or the ability to apply God's truth to my life. So a wise person is a person who, when faced with decisions, when faced with the question, how am I going to handle this conflict, or or, what am I going to say, or or, what should I do next? A, A wise person is someone who consistently makes decisions that reflect a commitment and a faithfulness to God's truth. Uh, I'm a wise person when uh, you interact with somebody. It's just like they always seem to be um, sensitive uh, to what is right and what is good. That's, that's a wise person. That's a person who um, has a desire to do the right thing. And so they, they think through the issue. We don't lean toward our own understanding, like this text says, uh, but instead we, we trust the truth of God and, and we try uh, to make sense of how that applies to what we're going through. So in particular, there's this phrase in this, uh, this section of Proverbs that uh, really communicates uh, this theme, this idea. It says, he shall direct thy paths. And, and, if, and if there's any uh, thought or phrase or anything that you leave with, like that, that verse of Scripture, which is as much a principle as it is a promise, that is, when we acknowledge God and his truth, when we say, you know what, uh, I'm going to involve God and his word and my faith into my decision making, uh, he will direct our paths, right? That is not to say that it'll always be crystal clear. Uh, there are some things that pretty easy to know what's the right thing to do. If you have to make a decision between telling the truth and lying, and for those of you that like the, you know, ethical puzzles and stuff, I'm not talking about if you have a surprise birthday party. I'm saying if you, <laughs> if you are deciding Am I going to lie for my own self-preservation or to hurt somebody else? Or am I going to tell the truth? Well, uh, the right decision, the good decision is, is a pretty obvious one. I don't lie, right? God's word says that we're to speak truth. It's not always that clear, but I have found, at least in my own life, that God's word has a lot to say. And as believers, uh, New Testament followers of Jesus, we also have the Holy Spirit of God who indwells us. And the Holy Spirit helps us to understand spiritual things. He points us to Christ and helps us to remember what Jesus said and how Jesus lived so that we can know how to live. And so when we are sensitive to the Holy Spirit and when we are uh, committed to the scriptures, God's revealed will to us, uh, more often than not, you're going to find yourself in situations where you have to make decisions and you come uh, to that moment ready, ready to make a good decision, ready to make one that's uh, informed, that's, uh, that's healthy for you and for people around you because... Uh, you've committed to God's truth. You've committed to his word. You're trying to be sensitive to the leading of the Holy Spirit. So in the book of Proverbs, <clears throat> it's written from the perspective of a father. Um, the majority of, of the Proverbs, we believe, were written by a man named Solomon, King Solomon. Although they weren't all written by him, most of them were believed to have been written by him. And, and it's written from this perspective of a father 
communicating truth to his son. Chapter 3, verses 1 through 12, is sometimes called the third parental plea because there's this language of my son. So it's a father communicating to his son, and he's, and he's pleading with him because he loves him, and he cares about him, and he wants what's best for him. And so uh, this section of Scripture, um, it, it, it comes with a lot of emotion. If you're a dad and you have a son, you understand the, you understand the emotion and the tone. I, I, want my, I, I love all three of my kids. I want all three of my kids to, to do well. There's something about a relationship between a father and their son. And I, 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 I want to, I, I have this sense of, of duty. I want to communicate to my son what it means to be a godly man and what it means to do right and be, have character. That's, that's important to me. And so when you hear the father, uh, you read those words, my son, um, especially if you're a dad in the room, but all of us can, can feel that emotion. And so uh, this passage of scripture is really great for us to uh, is really great and helpful for us if we're trying to figure out when it comes to making decisions, when it comes to having my paths directed, right? At the heart of it is, am I going to listen to my father? Am I going to listen to the one who cares about me, who has my best interest in mind? A- am I going to receive his truth, as we're going to say? Am I going to take it with me throughout my life? A- and am I just going to commit that I'm depending on his word, that I'm, I'm going to have a healthy suspicion of my own thinking. And I'm just going to constantly be, be checking, it, checking myself against God's word, seeking the leading of the Holy Spirit. Um, we're living in a, uh, and we've, uh, all generations have faced this kind of a temptation, but, but sometimes I feel like in particular, in our context, it's like make decisions now, do things now. You find yourself kind of uh, under that, that constant pressure and but when you read the scriptures, especially uh, you read this wisdom literature of Proverbs, the idea is that you have one life and it's worth it to learn to slow down a little bit and listen to what the Father has to say. It's worth it to be like, you know what? I only have one life to live and so I, w- I want to make good choices. And so I'm not going to be forced to, sometimes really as a sort of a device of the enemy, I'm not going to be forced to just always make decisions and just act, act, act. Now I'm going to be sensitive because I want to hear what the Father has to say. I want to do what the, fa- excuse me, what the Father wants me to do. So as we think about this idea, how can I know what God wants me to do in any situation? I want us to focus on this idea of the Father's wisdom and his truth and God communicating truth to us. And I, and I want to think about it in three ways. And in this section of Scripture, one of those literary devices that Proverbs uses is there's a command or an instruction, and then it's followed by a blessing or a benefit. So if you'll do this, this is what will happen. And we see that in verses 1 through 12 of chapter 3. We're just going to look at the first eight verses, but we're going to go back and forth, and we're going to offer up a couple of thoughts about what our approach to God's truth, both his word and the leading of the Holy Spirit should be, and how that can help us to make good decisions. So first, receive the truth of God. Receive the truth of of God. What do we mean by that? Verse number one, the Bible says, My son, forget not my law, but let thine heart keep my commandments. The father is communicating to his son, I don't just want your agreement, I want your heart. I don't just want you to memorize what I'm saying to you so that you can repeat it if necessary. I want you to receive it as a word from me. That phrase, let thine heart keep my commandments, it's not just some old English phrase. That the, 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 the underlying Hebrew is very intentional and intends to communicate to us not just understanding it, but receiving it as a word. He said, I want you to obey I want you to be faith. I want you to listen, and I want you to do it from your heart. There's something different about this. When we say, I believe commands that he gives me interest in mind. I believe, but as loving, and so I receive his hands from somebody who cares about me. When I was younger, I knew everything. And as I've gotten older, my, my grandpa 
Martin, who I had the privilege to serve as alongside in Maryland, he said, the older that you get in a mature way, the older that we you know. And that's a great thing. That's true. Because the older, at least, at least if, if we're being, uh, approaching it in a healthy and mature way, the older that we get, the less confident we are in our own understanding of things, the more ready, we're, ready we, are, we are to learn and grow from the things that we experience. If we receive God's word, his truth, if we're sensitive to the Holy Spirit, not, oh, this is just another thing I have to do. No, the Father says, I love you, I care about you, I want what's best for you. When my dad would communicate things to me, I remember when he would warn me about this, or when he would say, you need to be careful about that. Oh, it was just so irritating. It was just, uh, why do you have to bother me so much? And I look back now, and I didn't, my dad wasn't perfect, but I'll tell you what, he cared about me. He cared about my well-being. He had my best interest in mind. And more often than not, I can look back and I can see that he was communicating to me and I was, I was good at uh, knowing what to say and repeating it back if I needed to. But it didn't reach here. Sometimes the difference between good decisions and bad decisions is basically the distance between our head and our heart. We know what God says but we don't regard it as a loving word from a father. It's just information. But he said, obey from your heart. Receive the truth. If we're going to make good decisions, if we're going to live lives that are faithful and obedient to God and his truth, we are going to receive it as a loving word. We're going to value it. It's going to matter to us. No, I want to hear what God has to say. Have you ever, as a, as a New Testament believer, indwelt by the Holy Spirit? If you're here and you're a follower of Christ who believed in Jesus, you are indwelt by the Holy Spirit of God. And have you ever had moments in your life where you needed direction and you just cried out to God, Holy Spirit, lead me. I want to I want, I want follow you. I need your direction in my life. Because you're, you, you're confident that you have a God who cares about you and loves you and wants to direct you. When I receive the truth in that way, when I say, God, I believe that you care about me. That's when I, I'm going to put an emphasis on it. I'm going to be uh, intentional about it. I need God's word because it, it matters to me. He said, receive my truth. What's the blessing of receiving the truth in this way? Regarding it not as just instructions, but as the loving words of a father who cares about us. Verse number three, two says, for length of days and long life and peace shall they add to thee. Verse number two is not intended necessarily to be a, a, a straight line promise, but a principle. In other words, if you do the right thing, seek God's truth, you value it. It's a word from God. He cares about me. He loves me. And so I'm going to get into the word and I'm going to seek the leading of the Holy Spirit because he cares about me. Um, it, it doesn't mean you're going to live to be 100 years old. But what it means is when you receive the truth, when you say, I, I value it as a, as a word from a loving heavenly father, it is going to give you some better options, right? What happens in our lives is uh, you can talk to people. You can, you can give, there's testimony of people who, whether it's uh, the overall quality, physical quality of their life, mental, physical, emotional health, uh, sin, doing the wrong thing, going the wrong way, it has consequences on us. And, and, and the father loves his son and he says, listen, I want you to have a long life. I want you to have a peace-filled life. man. Whenever I read that in Scripture, that seems like such a fleeting thing to me. Seems like such a, it seems like such a wish, a shadow in the world. Peace. Peace of mind. Peace with relationships. And yet the Bible is very, it's filled with statements like this. And I, and I feel like sometimes, where is the disconnect? The Bible says, long life, long days, and peace shall they add to you. When you and I start putting a, a priority, and when we say, God, you're a loving Heavenly Father, you care about me, and so I'm receiving your truth. I'm, I'm not going to let um, people's uh, uh, distortions and characterizations of your truth right, distract me. No, I, I, you love me, you care about me, I want to hear from you. So you read the Word, and you, and, you, and you are sensitive to the Holy Spirit, and you, God, lead me, guide me. You pray for it, you cry out for it, because you love it. And when you, when you experience that in your life, Peace is not the absence of conflict. It's not that you, you never have any problems. Peace, living with peace, experiencing peace, is that even it, when I face conflict and when I'm going through those difficult things, I, I just, 
I know where I stand. I know what I have. I know the truth that I have. Peace, living with peace, is about having a solid foundation so that even when things are difficult. Um, we have an unusual family dynamic in our home. My wife loves thunderstorms, loves them in, to an unhealthy, weird degree. She loves thunderstorms, right? So if there's a thunderstorm, she wants to stand outside and, and watch it. And conversely, Brooklyn, is my youngest, is pretty certain that anytime there's a thunderstorm, we are all going to die. Like, it's just, it's over, right? And so I didn't help because I watched this show. I thought it was great, but it was about, uh, like, storm footage and stuff. And, yeah, that didn't make it any better. So we were talking about um, the fact that it hasn't rained in a while, and looks like we might get some next week, but we were talking about how it hasn't rained and how we need it to rain, and she's like, I hope it never rains. You know, like, she just does not like storms. And Garrett says, Brooklyn, we are, when, when the storm is, we are inside this house, right? It, the, the storm is out there. We're inside this house. Now, she was less convinced that our house would protect us, especially after I let her watch videos of, of things being destroyed. But Garrett had very, Garrett's like trying to comfort her and help her. It's like, listen, so I'm, I'm listening to them talk and I'm thinking, that's what it's about. Like, there are going to be difficult things in your life. You're going to, it's, it's not like, if, if, man, if I just obey God, I'm just going to get this sweet spot and I'll never argue with anybody and I'll never have a disagreement at work and nobody, I'm just going to be peace. No, the idea is that when these things come, I, I know what to do. I know, I know what I'm, I know what I need, I know how I need to respond to this. I, I have something that can help me with this. And so you have a peace of mind. Um, some of us who've gone through some things, you look back in your life, you've learned some lessons, you've learned through experience, which you've also learned through the truth. And so now when you go through things that you went through before, it's not the same because you have a different perspective. And God's desire is to grow us and to form us so that that becomes a consistent reality in your life. He wants you to experience growth and progress. He wants you to have peace, not uh, a freedom from any conflict. You'll, not, you'll never have another hard conversation, not you'll never be stressed out again. He wants you to have peace, a confidence. I've given you a word. You're indwelt by my Holy Spirit. I'm leading you and guiding you. And so whatever you face and whatever's happening in your life, just receive it. Receive a word from me as a word from a father who loves you and cares about you. God has given us truth. He's given us his Holy Spirit. If I want to make decisions, I need to value, treasure, love, regard God's word for what it is. It's not just information. It's his truth for me, for you, to help us live our lives. Receive the truth of God. What about this? Take the truth with you throughout your day. We visited this, and for those that were part of our series uh, that we just finished a few weeks ago, working our way through 2 Peter, we visited this thought uh, briefly in the uh, final lesson, and I'm excited to be able to lean into it a little bit again tonight. Verse number three says, Let not mercy and truth forsake thee. Bind them about thy neck. Write them upon the table of thine heart. Really interesting language here. And again, the, the Proverbs, the the literary style, it's, it's almost poetic. It's, it's beautiful. When he talks about mercy and truth forsaking, we understand that these virtues of, of, of mercy, right, that, that kind of steadfast love that, doesn't, uh, that, that shows people what they, not what they deserve, uh, but gives them grace, and uh, truth, right, what's right, what's sure, what's good. He says, don't let those things forsake you. It's not that um, I've got to be on guard so that they, these don't escape, right? The, the, the idea is, don't leave these things behind. So we receive truth. We, ha we have a word and we have a Holy Spirit. But here's the thing. Um, we can't all sit here 24 hours a day, seven days a week in church where we're being encouraged and we're around other people who are at least trying to do the same thing. No, we have to go that we have to go. And so God, I've got to go over there and I've got to go over here. He's given us truth. We all the miracle of the cross and through the breaking of the veil and, and all the, 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 the incredible things that happened at Calvary, we are indwelt by the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit of God came down and each and every one of us has the Holy Spirit of God to lead us and guide us. And so you 
have to live your life. You have to go where you need to go and do what you need to do and all the responsibilities and the relationships that come with it. And what you need to do is you need to take the truth with you. Our relationship with God and his truth, our faith, is not to be relegated to a particular time of the week or particular day of the week. We are to be living constantly in the light of his truth. So I take the truth with me where I go. What does that mean? He says, don't forsake it. Bind them about thy neck. Write them upon the table of thine heart. Language uh, that the son would have uh, recognized, understood from the language of the law in the same way that God communicated to his people the truth. And he said, put it on the doorposts. Write it where you can see it. Put it out in front so that your children can see. He said, I want you to take these truths. Bind them about thy neck. Write them upon the tables on thine heart. Don't leave it in a particular place for a particular time. Take it with you. And so what does that mean? That means I have to be intentional about putting the truth in front of me. I, I have to be hungry for it. I have to be receiving it on a regular basis. See, we are vessels in uh, God's hands, but we're broken vessels, and we have a tendency to leak. And so if, we don't, if we're not constantly refilling, right, we're going to find ourselves in moments in our life where we are barren and empty and dry. We need to be uh, uh, reloading constantly, constantly. And so I have to be intentional and I have to be receiving the truth and taking it with me. It, it can't be where we just leave it in the morning. We open up our Bibles and we read or we go to church and we study scripture. Or we, whatever, however it is that you're receiving truth into your life, it, it, it has to be where I'm, okay, I'm gonna take hold of this and now I'm taking it with me where I go. I'm gonna actually put it into practice in my life. Right? It's one thing to hear what Jesus said to his disciples and to us about how to forgive and how to handle our disputes. It's another thing to go to work and say, I, that's what I'm going to do. When, I, when I'm faced with a, a, a situation where I have to handle a dispute, my, my go-to is what Jesus told me to do. And, and I know that for me, I grew up in church, I've spent my whole life in church, around, around Christian people, learning the Bible, Sunday school, church, all those things. But man, when it comes time to where the rubber meets the road, so often we leave the truth at home. We leave the truth on the shelf and, and, and we figure it out on our own. But we need to take it with us. God has given us a truth. And listen, everywhere you go, wherever you are, the Holy Spirit of God is with you. Amen. He has a desire to point you to Christ to lift up Jesus in your life, to, to, to remind you of the truth, to help you understand spiritual things. And so wherever you are and whatever you're doing, be sensitive to the leading of the Holy Spirit. Ask him to lead you and guide you. Take the truth with you. That's what we need. We need to live out our faith and live out the truth, obedience and faithfulness to it in our daily life. This extends beyond just our own spiritual lives. When we think about our call to be witnesses for Jesus, Think of a better way to be a witness for Jesus than for people to say, why did you handle it that way? Like, why, why, did, you, why did you say that? Well, my God says to love your enemies and to do good to those that hate you. What, what better way to be a witness than to just live the truth? You don't have to, uh, you don't have to stand up uh, on the desk, uh, street preach to your coworkers. How do you know how to handle this? God. And do it his way. I'm a believer. I mean, I, I let her trying to figure out what, what truth, and I'm taking it with me. Um, when he talks about mercy and truth, there's lots of uh, virtues, lots of uh, um, uh, characteristics that he could have communicated to his son. And yet I think about for us as believers, if I'm, if I'm just trying to think about how can I make good decisions, he says mercy and truth. Now, I, I don't know how this applies. I feel like this is the right thing to say. But if you're just trying to figure out stuff, Work, family, whatever. Mercy, truth. You, you like, what, okay, where do I start when it's just like living out the truth? Mercy and truth. People need mercy, people need truth. People need somebody in their life who, who, who they know is telling, uh, tell, is being honest, who they know they can come to and find grace and love. Mercy and truth. If there's anything that you can take with you, take those things with you. Take them to school, take them to work, take them home. Take mercy and truth with you. Bind them about your neck. Write them on the tables of your heart. Take the truth with you. He said, don't forsake it. 
you're going to have a decision, right? You're going to have to decide, how am I going to live my life today? And listen, I wish that it could be said, just 100% success rate. (laughs) But we don't have that, right? We have our good days and we have our bad days. In my life, I look back over, I count up the good, I count up the bad, and I do see a reoccurring theme in my life. Bad days are days where I just go with what I've got. I forsake the truth. I leave it back there. Leave it at church. Leave it on the mantle. Leave it on the coffee table. I don't, uh, instead of taking my faith, my relationship with my God, uh, the, the, the idea that I'm indwelt by the Holy Spirit, that I'm his witness and his, um, and his ambassador in the world, I just leave all that behind. And then I find myself making mistakes. What does he say in verse number four? When you take the truth with you, what happens? So shalt thou find favor and good understanding in the sight of God and man. When I take the truth with me, God is pleased, which we're thankful for. He is given glory through the things that I do and say. And we are on this earth to please and glorify them. And when you, God, Sometimes there's going to be people that don't understand, that don't appreciate. You are here to glorify God, to be faithful and obedient to him is a powerful thing. Take the truth with you when you commit to faith or clear. That when I take the truth, God is glorified, his name is lifted up, and that is a powerful thing. But the Bible is also clear that when I take the truth with me, it makes a difference in my relationship with other people. Um, I think sometimes... You read the New Testament and the way Jesus talks about our relationship with others. And, and it's true, there's going to be people that don't get it. There's going to be people that give you a hard time uh, when they find out about your faith or whatever. But in my experience, uh, God blesses faithfulness and obedience to him. And if you want to make a difference in the different areas or sectors of your life, be faithful to him. He says he gives uh, favor and good understanding or, or um, uh, there's, a, there's a benefit, a success almost to your uh, relationships and your interactions. Why? Through uh, faithfulness to God. Take the truth. Take mercy with you. Bind them about your neck. Write them on the tables of your heart. And what happens when we do that? Practically, God is glorified. The, the Literally, the purpose for which we exist is fulfilled. We bring him glory. And it makes a difference in our relationships. Um, sometimes we, we struggle. Like, how can I make this relationship better? Take the truth to that relationship, right? The, whatever, you've been, whatever you've been using so far is not working, right? So why not, okay, God, I, this, this is not, this part of my life is not, it's not working. This relationship is not working. Lead me, guide me, show me, give me a, a sensitive heart. Help me to, help me to be, um, help me to be uh, ready to, to act when you lead and you move and you prompt. I, Lord, I'm ready, I'm willing, here I am. Like, lead me, guide me. I wanna take the truth <clears throat> with me. Um, if there's a relationship in your life that's not a healthy one or that's not um, as, as good as you'd hope it to be, um, I want to encourage you with something. Um, a piece of uh, wisdom and counsel and advice that I was given that really has helped me. If you find yourself uh, every time, um, for lack of a better way of putting it, you just would rather step on shards of glass than talk to this person, okay? Like, you're just, you just don't look forward to these conversations. But, in some cases, the interaction or, or it's going to happen. And you find yourself like, what can I do? Give God the opportunity. Open up his word. Read. Uh, pray. God, lead me. Guide me. Show me. Is there something? Can you, I need your help. Give God a chance to show you. Give God a chance to speak to you. And at the very least, when you welcome him into this moment, into that conversation, it makes all the difference. It changes things. Maybe you've got stuff going on at work. Um, I can remember when I first started working at the company I worked for in Pennsylvania. I think I've told the story about a guy named Jesse. He called me Charlie for no reason at all. I, I, and it stuck, and all these people are calling me Charlie. But he, called me, he would call me Charlie, and he would call me Reverend. And he just gave me a lot of, of hard time with my being a Christian, being a pastor. Um, he was just gross on purpose and that kind of thing. And, 
And I just found myself kind of getting increasingly frustrated, like, how do I handle this? And then one day, I really lost my cool with Charlie. Um, I got, he, he called me Charlie and said some gross thing, and I just, I told him where, what I thought about what he said to me and where I think he should go and what I think he should do. I just, I was like, I don't want to talk to you anymore, man. I was, I was so upset by that. And I went home and I told Rebecca about that interaction. And a loving and godly wife, she encouraged me that I had the opportunity to be um, stupid and a testimony to him. It by so far. But, <laughs> but I knew that that was probably the right thing to do. And so um, I left that morning and it was early. I would, I would go into work at like 4.45, 5 o'clock. And she texted me. She texted me um, verses from the Gospels about forgiveness, and it was so irritating. I mean, it's like, just go to bed, like, be asleep. But I, 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 armed with that thought and armed with the truth, I went to him, and I said, Jesse, I was wrong. I lost my temper the other day. Like, will you please forgive me? And he said something along the lines of, like, whatever. He didn't respond great at all. I bet you were expecting, like, a different end to that story, right? He didn't respond great at all. I felt wonderful. And I walked away from that moment and I thought, okay, I, did, it, um, did it all work out the way I wanted it to? Uh, no, I would have preferred him to be like, you know what? I've been wrong to be treating you that way. It didn't go that way. But I walked away from it and thought, God, I did what you said to do. I was faithful. And I'm just asking you to bless it. Like, that's all I can do. I took his word, I took his truth, and I did what he asked me to do. It would not be until years later that Jesse found himself in a very, very difficult situation with his family and his wife and his uh, children, and it was, it was so difficult. And uh, my boss called me. I was on my day off, and he said, Hey, Jesse called me and said, Can you call Charlie and ask him to pray for me? <laughs> and then that following week, I had a chance to talk to him, and I just remember thinking to myself, Who knows where we would be today if it hadn't been for that moment. The, 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 if, if you'll take the truth with you and you'll experience uh, the, the blessings of it, it the, our, the relationships and the things that we, that we struggle with and the conflict that we have in life, God promises that when we are faithful to his word the, the, and, we're, and we receive the truth and we're passionate about the truth and we take the truth with us and we live it out practically daily, it is going to give us opportunities to witness. It is going to give us opportunities to make a difference in the lives of other people. Good favor and understanding with God, which is what matters most, and with others. And any person that you're able to impact or influence because of your faithfulness is a testament to God's grace in our lives. Uh, final thought, there's receiving the truth, there's uh, taking it with us, taking the truth with you every day, and then finally, it's depend on the truth. So these are the verses that are familiar to us. The Bible says, trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not unto thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him and he shall direct thy paths. Be not wise in thine own eyes, fear the Lord and depart from evil. It shall be held to thy navel and marrow to thy bones. When we depend on ourselves and on our own understanding of things, and we forsake God's truth, it creates issues in our lives. We are easily deceived, and uh, we are uh, naturally inclined to do the wrong thing. We need God. We need the Holy Spirit. We need His transforming and forming power in our lives. And and the encouragement of the Father to the Son is trust in the Lord and don't lean to your own understandings. Your default should not be your first thought. Your default should be, what, is, what does God want me to do in this situation? In all your ways, in every aspect of your life, in the decisions that you make, acknowledge Him. As a married man, when I make decisions, I have a conversation like, Rebecca, what do you think about this? Do you, here's what I'm thinking, but what do you think? That is acknowledging God. But what do you, what do you think? Where, where, what, what is God's heart in this? Our lives are so fast-paced. We have so many relationships and roles and so many responsibilities that come with that. It is easy to just clip through life 
And before you know it, weeks or months have gone by. And, and when was the last time in, in, in real time you found yourself in a circumstance, uh, a conflict, something in your home with your spouse or your children or whatever, where you just found yourself stopping, breathing? What does God want me to do? What would his will for me be? And he says, be not wise in thine own eyes. Fear the Lord and depart from evil. He said, son, if we are going to make it and do right and stay away from evil, we need to recognize God for who he is and we need to recognize ourselves for who we are. It is a a wonderful, wonderful thing, God's grace and his mercy and his love for us. And he says, if we're not wise in our own eyes, fear the Lord and depart from evil. God is holy. We are not. We make mistakes. We don't do the things that we should. And yet, in his mercy and his grace, he welcomes us into his presence as his own, as his children. And here's what happens. As we journey along life, we have an enemy, we have a world, we have a flesh that come alongside us and say, man, you are fantastic. And we start to forget that it's God's grace, it's his love, it's his mercy in our lives. He says, don't be wise in your own eyes. How can I keep from being wise in my own eyes? Fear the Lord, depart from evil. Get into his presence and remind yourself of how holy he is and how holy you're not. And yet in his grace and his mercy and love, he welcomes us. And when I remember who he is and who I am, I have a very low opinion of my opinion. And I have a high view of his opinion. And in my experience in the Christian life, living for God, it literally, if, it, if there's a way you could summarize it, it it's, the, it's this battle between, um, it's this battle between being wise in our own eyes and fearing the Lord. And there's this tension that always exists. Because if we're honest, there's stretches of time where we do not uh, enter into his presence in prayer. We do not go to the assembly, the gathering of our brothers and sisters. We don't engage in the spiritual disciplines and habits that put us into his presence and confront us with his truth. And what happens? We slowly, slowly begin to revert back to our natural place, which is rebellion to God and his authority. And he says, son, fear God, depart from evil. You want an antidote for thinking that you've got it all together? You just get into his presence. You you prioritize his truth. You welcome uh, the holiness and the greatness and the power of God into your life. And just let that blinding light of his glory just expose all the stuff. And it and it seems like, man, that's like really depressing and and uh, self deprecating kind of. Uh, uh, of practice, but it's not. It's so liberating. See, the Bible says men love darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil. And when you step into the light, when you're just constantly saying, God, just remind me of who you are. You are powerful and holy and good. And, and, and every time I get into your presence, I'm reminded of just how much I need you. I need you, God. I, I'm, I'm not what I need to be, but by God's grace and because of your love, I have the truth. He says in verse number eight, it shall be health to thy navel and marrow to thy bones. There is so much interesting things that we could say, uh, symbolism and, and cultural uh, uh, implications with those statements. But, but at the heart of it, he says, your health, your mental, spiritual, emotional, and in some cases, even your physical health is blessed and encouraged when you fear God and depart from evil. When you say, I'm not, I'm not depending upon myself. I'm refusing to trust myself. I'm trusting in the Lord. I'm acknowledging him. What does he want for me? Um, and there were times in my life in the moment I knew that what I wanted to do and what I was pretty sure I was going to do was not right. It wasn't what God wanted. And I knew that in the moment, and I did it anyway. There are other times I can look back on now, and if, I'd imagine if I said, raise of hands, you might be able to, like, I wouldn't be alone in this. There were times where I look back at my life, and I know that in the moment I made a bad decision. But in the moment, I didn't think that. I was deceived in the moment. I was pretty sure that I was doing the right thing because I had convinced myself that how I felt, the way I thought it needed to be done, was the right way to do it. We, we make excuses, we deceive ourselves when we trust 
in our own understanding, when we're wise in our own eyes. It's much better, much better to welcome God's truth into your life and His Holy Spirit to guide and to be wise as a result of God's... I want to be, I want to be a wise person because as much as I can, as often as I can, I am faithful to God and His Word and sensitive to His leading in my life. And all the glory and honor and praise will go to Him because He's worthy. I need that humility. I need that holiness. I need the, the, the work that only God can produce in my life. And He says, Son, Son, it will, it will help you. It will, bring, it, will, it will change things about your life. It will bring in a... It's, it's good for your soul. It's soothing to you. Fear the Lord, depart from evil. Those two steps of reverence for God, entering into his presence, seeing him in his glory, seeking his face, and saying no to sin, those two steps keep us humble. They keep us from this overestimation of our own understanding and our own way of thinking about things. And they just give us this sensitivity. I just want to be sure. I want to do it God's way. And so I'll take the time, and I'll slow down, and I'll... And I'm not just going to always do the first thing that comes to my mind. Sometimes the first thing that comes to your mind is the right thing because the Holy Spirit of God is working and he's grown and formed you. You know the truth and you can do the right thing. But sometimes you have to be willing to trust God, to not lean on our own understandings. Instead, lean on his understandings, his way, his truth. Um, If you've never had times in your life where you were like, I'm pretty sure I know what God says. But that sounds like a horrible idea. (laughs) I mean, it just doesn't seem like it's going to work. That is leaning on your own understanding. And the question is, when God has spoken or when his Holy Spirit has revealed and when he's leading you and guiding you and you say, I don't know, trust the Lord. Follow his leading. Lean his way and and it says he'll direct your path. He's going to guide you. He's going to show you what's next and it's going to make a big difference. Um, I, I feel like, decision-making, finding out what God wants me to do, doing the right thing. It's such a fundamental part of living out our faith. And I hope that this lesson and last week's lesson can, can together serve as, a, as just a help, a blueprint, practically and scripturally, how we can work our way through these things, how we can be more sensitive to God's truth and to his leading in our lives.